In the last video, we looked at the geometric product of vectors. This product is fundamental to geometric algebra. But geometric algebra is about multivectors, not just vectors. How do we multiply arbitrary multivectors? That is what we will answer in this video. This video is a part of From Zero to Geo, a series where we formulate geometric algebra, an incredibly powerful branch of mathematics, from the ground up. Before we talk about the product of arbitrary multivectors, let's briefly summarize how we find the product of vectors. There are two ways to think of it, a geometric way and an algebraic way. Geometrically, we multiply parallel vectors by multiplying the lengths of the vectors. If the vectors are pointing in opposite directions, it's the negative of the product of the lengths. We multiply perpendicular vectors by joining the two vectors into a bivector, with the orientation going along the first vector and then the second. To multiply arbitrary vectors, we can split one vector into parts that are parallel and perpendicular to the other and multiply these parts separately. Algebraically, we came up with these rules for the product of basis vectors. Then, to calculate an arbitrary product, we can distribute and then use these rules to simplify. Notice that we can line up the parts of the geometric and algebraic understandings of the geometric product. The multiplication of parallel vectors corresponds with the square of a basis vector, the multiplication of perpendicular vectors corresponds with the product of distinct basis vectors, and the splitting of a vector into parallel and perpendicular parts corresponds with how we use distributivity to calculate a product. This is a general feature of geometric algebra. When you run into a geometric idea, there is often a corresponding algebraic idea, and vice versa. So, when trying to extend this product to all multivectors, should we be thinking about the product geometrically or algebraically? While I am a big fan of starting with the geometry and then moving on to the algebra, in this case, the extension is so simple algebraically that I'll start there. We'll look at the geometric understanding of the product throughout the rest of this chapter. So let's focus on the algebraic understanding of the geometric product here. We can calculate products on vectors using these equations on basis vectors. To calculate products on multivectors, we can use these equations on basis vectors. Wait, that's the same thing! It turns out that multiplying multivectors algebraically is practically the same thing as multiplying vectors algebraically. Here, let's look at a few examples. Let's look at the product of a vector with a bivector, such as e1 times e12. e12 is equal to e1 e2, and we now have e1 squared, which is just 1, so e1 times e12 is e2. Now what about e2 times e12? Expanding e12 into e1 times e2, we don't have a basis vector squared. However, we can swap e1 and e2 at the cost of a minus sign, and at this point we have e2 squared, which is just 1. Thus, e2 times e12 is minus e1. Another product we could try is e3 times e12. In this case, no matter what we do, there is no basis vector squared here. However, we could at least swap a couple times to sort the basis vectors. I'll talk about this a little more later, but similar to how e1 e2 is equal to e1 2, e1 e2 e3 is equal to e1 2 3. So our final answer here is e1 2 3. Now notice what happens if we swap the orders in these products. e1 2 times e1 ends up being equal to negative e2, e1 2 times e2 ends up being equal to e1, and e12 times e3 is simply e123. Notice that the product is not commutative in the first two cases, but it is commutative in the third case. You always have to be careful with the order of the factors in a product in geometric algebra. Now let's look at one more example. What is i squared? Remember that i is an alternative name for e12. After squaring it, we can swap these two basis vectors, adding a minus sign, and then e1 squared is 1 and e2 squared is 1 as well, showing that i squared equals negative 1. So we have a concrete geometric object that squares to negative 1. This is interesting since there are no real numbers that square to negative numbers. Now there might be something nagging at you in these calculations. When calculating e1, e1, 2, we should technically have parentheses around e1, e2 when expanding. Then, to get to squaring e1, we would have to know that the geometric product is associative. 
So is the geometric product associative? The answer to this question is yes, the geometric product is associative. In a sense, we have defined the geometric product on all multivectors by taking the product on vectors and extending by associativity. This argument is very non-rigorous, but rigorous proofs that the geometric product is associative are quite advanced, so we won't talk about them until chapter 7. The important point is that the geometric product is associative, so these kinds of manipulations are valid. Before we move on, I want to talk about the products of distinct basis vectors a little more. We saw in the last video that the product of E1 and E2 is E12, and that this result generalizes to all products of two basis vectors. It turns out that this generalizes even further to all products of any number of basis vectors. Whenever you are calculating a product involving higher grade objects, you should expand the basis multivectors in this way to be able to use the rules for the product of basis vectors. After simplifying, you can unexpand any products that remain. Let's look at a more complicated example that involves higher grade objects. Let's calculate this product. The first step in calculating any product is distributing. At this point, we can expand the basis multivectors into products of basis vectors. Now, we can sort the basis vectors in each term by swapping the basis vectors, adding minus signs each time. Notice that some of these terms require a lot of swaps. You need to be careful to keep track of your minus signs when doing this. Once the basis vectors are all sorted, the square of any of the basis vectors disappears since every basis vector squares to 1. We can now unexpand all of the vector products. At this point, these two E2 terms cancel, and these two E125 terms combine, producing this final result. Like with the product of two vectors that we looked at in the previous video, it is very important to be able to calculate the product of two multivectors. Thus, let's do an exercise. Please calculate all of these products. You can use the example we just went through as a reference. Because these are computational problems, I won't work through the answers and just show the solutions in a few seconds. One final thing that I need to bring up somewhere is the use of the word algebra. I said in chapter 1 that any set with operations that satisfies these conditions is called a linear space. In modern algebra, linear spaces are one example among many things that are called algebraic structures. Some other well-known algebraic structures are groups, rings, and fields. I'm not expecting you to know about these other algebraic structures, but it's good to know the context that linear spaces come from. Modern algebra is the study of algebraic structures like these. However, multivectors are more than a linear space. We now have a definition of multiplication. It turns out that a linear space with a way to multiply is another algebraic structure that mathematicians sometimes talk about. There are many examples of this algebraic structure, such as polynomials, functions, and, of course, multivectors. So what name did mathematicians decide to give this algebraic structure? Algebra, of course. To be frank, this is a terrible name. Why did they decide to name a particular algebraic structure algebra? This means that the study of algebras is one of the subfields of the study of algebra. I bring this up because the word algebra in the term geometric algebra comes from this use of the word. It's not that we are using algebra in general to do geometry, it's that we are studying a particular algebra that is useful in geometry. Since the set of multivectors depends on the dimension, we often even talk about each set as being a separate geometric algebra. So you could say that the mathematical field of geometric algebra is the study of geometric algebras. Yes, I know it's confusing, but that's just how it is. I mainly bring this up because we will sometimes want to say things like a geometric algebra or geometric algebras, which makes little sense if you think of geometric algebra as purely a field of math. Now I'm not going to be talking about general algebras anymore until chapter 7, so you don't need to bother understanding exactly what they are. Again, I'm just bringing this up now to help make the terminology we will use in the future make more sense. We now know how to multiply arbitrary multivectors. But what does this product look like geometrically? That is what we will look at in the next video.